Thank you for tuning in to another episode of Chief Chat. What is up, my exchange family from all over the world? And thank you for tuning in to another episode of Chief Chat. My name is Chief Master Sergeant Kevin Osbin. I'm your senior enlisted advisor for the Army and Air Force Exchange Service. Before we get started with our guest today, I would like to introduce my lovely co-hosts, Kiana Holloman and Emily Zars. How y'all doing, ladies? Ta-da, where you at? Bam. <laughs> Kiana and Emily, y'all, y'all there? Okay, is it just me? All right, well, listen, I guess today's just me. I'm sure Emily and, and Keanu will jump in uh, uh, shortly, but um, without further ado, let me introduce today's co- today's host. I mean, oh man, technical difficulties, got it. So let me introduce today's uh, guest. Today's guest is an Oscar and Grammy winning actor, singer, author, and more who plays a vampire hunter and a loving dad in a Netflix new action comedy, Day Shift. Please give a warm chief chat welcome to Jamie Foxx. Hey. What's up, baby? What's up, baby? Hey, you, you, y'all you, left out some stuff, man. I, I mean, quarterback, baby, you know, uh, dancer, uh, you know what I'm saying? I mean, just so you, happy to be here with you, my brother. Listen, I, you don't know how, how long you've been in my household. Look, bam, here got my co-host. Look at that. There it the is. Magic of TV. Oh, baby. Everybody's looking good. You guys look good. How are you? Oh good. yeah, absolutely. So it, Emily, Kiana, where'd y'all go? What? Where'd y'all go? We went to the movies real quick and then we decided to come <laughs> back and talk you're to you right, guys. You're right. <laughs> well, hopefully you hey, went to go so, check so, out so, the so, uh, so. day shift. That's the one we went and saw. We streamed it real quick. Oh, and listen, listen. First of all, I want to say this. I want to say. Might have been in it. Hey, listen. I want to say this. We just got the numbers back, and I want to say thank you to all of the fans. We got the numbers back, and the movie, that little movie, has done a hundred and twenty million viewing hours. It's Man. number one globally. It's been number one for the past two weeks, and we just want to thank the fans. It was a real, like, uh, it was a it was a fun movie, really popcorn, a no brainer, no thinker. Is a director who all behind the scenes of Fast and the Furious, John Wick. So this was his debut film. So all of that action and everything like that is is from his group of guys, like parkour guys and and and, and girls. And it was just a labor of love for them. And then Dave Franco, this young guy I've been tracking for years. I always got it. And I see want to do the film unless he's in it. We were lucky to, to get him in the film. And when he was on set, man, when I tell you ad living, he, he was amazing. He was on some Robin Williams type like flair. And then uh, Megan Good, shout out to Megan Good. So beautiful. It's her birthday too, Leo season. Shout out to her who just really held us down. And last but first, Snoop D O Double G. Uh, <laughs> who, 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 that's been my friend. He was Calvin Brodus, okay? He was Calvin Brodus at VIP Records in Long Beach back in the day when I was go to this record store, and there was a guy in the back that had a, a, a drum machine making beats, and everybody was trying to rap. I say, hey, I don't know about all y'all, but that little skinny dude right there, he got it. And wouldn't you know it, he became Snoop Dogg. And so when I called him about this, he was like, hey, say less, say less, nephew. I'm right there. Everything is good. And so now he is now an action star, which is, which is we, you know, we sit at the crib and just trip out that the fact that how far it's been over, check this out, three decades and still Man. going. So shout out to everybody uh, supporting that movie and, and shout out to my cast members. And Carla Sosa too. I gotta say, Carla Sosa, who played the the, the evil uh, lady, uh, she's amazing, beautiful uh, Spanish actor. Met her, uh, uh, her family, so she's just amazing. Well, Jamie, we appreciate you for joining us today on Chief Chat. 
Uh, it's a pleasure to meet you. Like I said, you, chief, you've chief, been in my chief, 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 you've been chief, a, you've chief, been in my chief, house for chief. decades, decades. And then from the looks of of this castle behind you, can you let us know, let our viewers on, know wh where you joining us from? Is this man? I'm at Transylvania. I'm at the crib, or what's going on? We got man. I'm at the crib, man. I'm right so, here at the crib. So Jamie, where's the know? Cowboys? Where the Cowboys paraphernalia? At? That's what I want to know. Oh man, but boy, don't make me boy. Now we doing some <laughs> renovation. I had to walk. You know I got the cowboy stuff, but I had to walk, walk off my thing. I don't want to lose it because I got a shrine, so I don't want to lose connection because this is the best. This is the best place. But I'm gonna bring let's, some let's stuff, keep baby. you here because you're gonna, we looking good. You're gonna get you gonna have to you gonna get ten thousand steps uh, walking through that house. So we don't want you to we don't want you to close your rings on your on your, on your Apple Watch. We good. <laughs> so yeah, man. So so I'm here at the crib, man. Just just excited to be talking to you guys, man. No, appreciate it. No, well, back to day shift just for a second. So I actually got to watch it this weekend. It's such a crazy yeah. movie to watch. If you guys haven't seen it yet, so good, so good. Um, it was really crazy to watch, but how crazy was it to make? Listen, it was crazy, but it was so much fun. Because you know those stunts. See, though, what I loved about it was a long you know, like long extended versions of fight scenes. It's like a, it's it's almost like a throwback to the old Kung Fu films you used to watch. And our guy, JJ, uh, who's ex-military, by the way, he was in the army. Uh, he's, he's so keen on doing those old school fights. So we really had to be in shape. I'll speak on behalf of Snoop the old double. Snoop was like, a, hey, uh, <laughs> yo what do i gotta do and he had to work out he had to gain a little weight gain some muscle because he had to hold that big bertha he had to hold that big gatlin gun and that gatlin was about 165 pounds so wow. we really had to be on top of our and you know snoop the only thing snoop lips lifts up is uh anyway uh <laughs> so you know. <laughs> And all of us, and Dave Franco, by the way, super athlete. So it was so much fun. And then think about some of those stunts, especially the opening scene, which everybody talks about. So I'm fighting this old lady, which was a trip. Like when people first saw the uh, trailer, they was like, my homies didn't even watch the whole trailer. Say, dog, you, you shooting old uh, grannies and stuff? And I said, no, she's a vampire, right? And so they were so incredible as far as how they were able to move, like with their contortions and things like that. So that was one thing we had to be very careful about because once they went into that, once they disengaged their bodies, we weren't allowed to jerk because it could cause like right, severe injury. So it was a little bit of a delicate dance, but then it was just fun, man. I mean, those Nazarian brothers, <clears throat> Steve Howie and Scott Ritchie were just amazing. And, and all those crazy scenes, man. You know, it's just good, old school fun, which I think that's why people are responding the way it is. You know what I'm saying? It's not necessarily plot heavy. It's not anything where you have to like think. It's just really just having fun. And it was interesting. We, you know, Netflix has never done uh, premieres. <laughs> so we did a premiere. It was crazy. And then we went to LA. You know, LA can be tight. You know, all man the people was watching the movie you know la get the tight wearing oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. black and off of latte could i get a latte that all that old stuff right you drinking no latte here baby you know what i'm saying so it's a good old ass kicking fun Oh, is it my turn? Are we good? Okay. Oh yeah, no, we good. I think we all we all froze because we was doing the. Uh, yeah, let, let me go to the next question. So you also play a single dad in day shift, which which sounds really close to home for you. Uh, you've written a book about being a single dad, a, a girl dad at that. Uh, you work with your daughter Corinne. Uh, so talk about some things that you learned from your daughters. Man, listen, I learn everything every day from my daughters. Man, from my youngest daughter, it's been interesting, especially especially with the way things have been going like you know in the world and and she's very keen at 13 years old uh 
owns her own space. She's already published uh, 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 poetry. She's the youngest, in, one of the youngest in the Writers Guild at, at 11 and a half, 12. She wrote her own, uh, created her own anime. Uh, she's a musician, after, I mean, who can play guitar, uh, bass, piano, and just the other day, well, yesterday, we went to the uh, softball game in USC. So we go in the band cage. Now, my daughter, 13, right? So it's a, it's another cage adjacent to us. It's a fastball. It's, what it, it's baseball. And, and, and it's set on like 65, which is like about a 70-mile-an-hour fastball. She jumps in, bro. Nobody can hit it, and she's laying them out at 13, wow. 75, miles, 75 miles an hour. So she's just my heart. But she also keeps me in tune with what young people want. You know, and that's an interesting thing of uh, having daughters that are really about more than just their surroundings. She really cares about the world, cares about where it's going. I wouldn't be surprised if seeing her in some type of capacity as uh, uh, someone really helping the world out, not only being a musician, but really, uh, I, I don't know how to explain it, man, but she, she hears our grown up conversations and just raises her hand and says, you old people are messing it up for everybody. And I was like, wow. And, and she made a great point. She said, dad, if you think about it, even the people that make our decisions in the world, they're all over 70. How would they know? They're all making decisions according to their lives and what they've lived. And to be honest, she said, they're close to being out of here, which I had to laugh. <laughs> I had to laugh at that. She said, but, but, she, but she made great points from a 13 year old. And I always, embrace her and, and and always give her the platform uh and, and she's a great kid and then my oldest daughter man who i learned so much from by being a father who was in this business which could be so crazy man and i protected her and shielded her from the hollywood so she had a pretty if you could say normal upbringing just the fact that you know the first time she went somewhere with her dad and she actually knew what i was doing we actually went to the oscars and so uh She's got a great head on her shoulders and always gave me a pass. Meaning like if I was away somewhere and I couldn't get to something, she always sort of understood. And I would bring her, I would bring her to, you know, I would bring her to work with me, but so smart. Uh, she's championing mental health issues. Uh, and at the same time, she's incredible in front of the camera. And now she officially is working at my company, running my company. We have a deal with Sony, uh, uh, so with Sony, uh, a film deal, and she runs the company, uh, and we have a great show called Beat Shazam. Hey, I'm I'm zooming. I'm I'm a uh, V mixing. I'm V mixing. You know, we it's still hood here. I'm V mixing. I'm on. The, I'm doing a, a interview, so I need to chatter down. She don't even know what it is. Yeah, I'm on. I'm on here. I'm on. That's my artist right there, Sailor. And then y'all say hi. I'm doing. Hey, hey, what's going on? How y'all doing? <laughs> yeah, yeah. What's your name? I... Hi. Hi. Sorry about that. I thought that was the kids. <laughs> <laughs> but anyway, but but she's she's such a she's such a light man, and and like my daughters, man. I'm telling you, uh, and, and like and, and like with any father, man, in my business, you don't people are never going to look at what I've accomplished in front of the camera and things like that they're going to look to me and see how my kids develop that's how we really we measure a person and so i've been really really fortunate to have great kids and great people around their mothers and a family that's that's amazing and so um it's it's wonderful man before i tear up No, but speaking of fatherhood, I remember when I was younger and Oprah was still on the air, you actually came on the show. I'm sure you were on the show a bunch of times, but you were on the show. You were talking about a song that you had written for your daughter. Um, and I think that your fatherhood is just such a great model um, and has been such a great model for years. Um, so kudos to you for that, number one. Like, Let's clap oh, it up. Thank you. Thank <laughs> you. Let's clap it up. Let's clap it up. <laughs> But also, you've also learned a lot of lessons from your own grandmother. So um, we'd like to hear a little bit about how she influenced you when you were growing up out here in Texas. You ain't in Texas, are you? Hi, I'm in D-Town. <laughs> D-Town, 214-817. Listen, you know how it is, man. I, I, I miss Texas. I, I, I enjoy 
I've enjoyed California for what it, it has done, but I've always missed Texas. My whole family uh, lives with me, my mother, my father, my mother, my father, who I got back in contact with, because, you know, I was adopted. So uh, my mom now lives with me and my stepfather lives with me, uh, both from Texas. And, and it was crazy. They've been divorced for like 30 something years and live in the same house. And, uh, and, and he still dates. He still dates. He's still going to dates. You know, sometimes she'll she'll float on his side of the house when the date is there, just to you know, mm, how you doing? All right, all right, whatever. <laughs> so, but growing up in Terrell, Texas, I wouldn't trade it for the world. Growing up in Terrell, Texas, I wouldn't trade it for the world, man. I, I and I tell people why because. I got people that really love me. I got a chance to really know what the world is about and have my feet planted. Uh, uh, make sure that I had every opportunity uh, uh, and every tool to be able to go out into the world and be success, success, successful. But it was that Texas upbringing. I can't say enough about how much we all miss and we will be headed to Texas and uh, uh, here pretty soon. Uh, we purchased some land there and we're gonna come back and uh, you know, get some of our, our, our Texas. And, uh, and that's because missing my grandmother and everything that she did to, to make sure that I was equipped to go out into the world and, for, and pursue my dreams. She taught me how to, she had a lady teach me how to play classical piano. And I was like, Granny, why am I playing classical piano? She said, so you can go across the tracks. I said, what you mean across the tracks? Like the white people? She said, no, silly. All over the world. It's, your music going to take you all over the world. And it did. And, uh, and, and she was my rock. And then when I got on this little show called In Living Color, man, I actually flew my grandmother out to come live with me. So she was living with me <clears throat> during that time. And my grandmother was just loving it, and we were loving each other. And I never get, we go out to the club. She'd be, the cl be at the club with me. I remember coming home, it was a little after party at my house, and some dude came in. <clears throat> he was like, Yo, man, who's that? Uh, who's the old lady in the, uh, in the front room? I said, Oh, that's my grandmother. And she, you hear the bottle of champagne, Boop, what we doing? Let's get it going. You know, so <laughs> we had a great, great, great time. Uh, the time that she was on this planet Earth, man, she blessed so many people. She had her own nursery school in our in our in our city, uh, so she basically raised our city. She was a businesswoman early on, you know, uh, and, and just strong. Like, and, look, and and stayed on me, made sure I got my church. You know, what I'm saying she say hit the books of the Bible: Genesis, Exodus, Leviticus, Numbers, Deuteronomy, Joshua, Judges, Ruth, First, Second Samuel, First, Second Kings, First, Second Chronicles, Ezra, Esther, Nehemiah, Job, Psalms, Proverbs, Ecclesiastes, Song of Solomon, Isaiah, Jeremiah, Lamentations, Ezekiel, Daniel, Hosea, Joel, Amos, Obadiah. That guy had, I mean, always on top of me. And, and to me, that is the reason that I have, have, have been able to prosper in this world from having that upbringing. And then I took that and passed it on to my kids. Like you go up to my 13 year old, she can say all of the books of the Bible as well. Uh, and that comes, that comes directly from Estelle Marie Talley and Marco Lois Talley. Man. So, so Jamie, I feel like we're twins, not not like yes, identical we're... twins, but more like you, you're Arnold Schwarzenegger and I'm Danny DeVito twins, because uh, you, you got a whole <laughs> bunch of stuff going on, and and me not so much. But but the thing is, is people that know me know that my grandmother was everything to me, and and uh, I yeah. tell you that uh, she 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 she's the only reason that I'm sitting here right now, and. So going back, I had a com I had a conversation uh, last week when I found out that you were going to be on the show with uh, Master R&D Parks. We were at a conference and we were talking about your Unpredictable album and we were talking about how much of a yeah. classic that was. But hey. those last oh, two songs, those last two songs on the album, especially that last one, where I, I wish you were here. I, I can't I get through that. I, yeah, man, I can't get through that song I without boo -boo -boo. Yeah. yeah. Man, I'm talking about thing. it's not bubble crying. Yeah, man, because you know what? It's supposed to make us cry, man. You know, when yeah. I, I I wrote on a post the other day on Instagram was someone really loves you. Um you time. It can stay in you for infinity. Your grandmother loved you and 
and, and you know, when you talk about African-American black grandmothers, you know, there's always a sacrifice. You know, I, I look at my grandmother and had she been born in this era, oh, she would have been, she would have had the opportunity to be anything in the world, you know what I mean? And the fact that, you know, our grandmothers, just by being born in the time that they're in, it's going to be a sacrifice. And so they pay it forward to me and you and they say, hey, listen, I'm going to give you everything I can. Uh, because I know that there's something special, something special for you, something special for uh, for me. And so that's why you cry is because you look at their sacrifices. You look at how much that for you. And I don't know your circumstance, but I know with us, you know, it was minimal money. I remember being on free lunch and things like that. And that government cheese, I never get when that government cheese came. <laughs> I didn't know what it was. I was a kid. I said, I, cause it was in a big, that big old box. I thought big, it was big like brown, ammunition. Yeah, a big brown rectangle. Yeah, I thought it was ammunition. I said, Granny, I think somebody sent us a book. <laughs> <laughs> she said, boy, that's she said, boy, that's cheese. I said, okay. And, the, and and just just seeing the government cheese in in the stove where she's trying to fix it and the cheese wouldn't melt, because I don't know what the cheese is made out of, but the cheese is sitting there like I ain't I ain't giving up, oh, yeah. right? But having <laughs> moments, having moments like that when as you get older, you look back, you say, Hey man, they did everything they could for us and so man god bless uh your grandmother my grandma everybody's grandmothers uh, that was out there making sure that you know we had what we needed absolutely and so in day shift uh you you play a military veteran so and you've also played a couple characters with military backgrounds what have you learned about the military while working on these projects Oh man, I, I, I'm surrounded by all of my military friends. To be honest with you, when I started doing stand up back in the day, uh, I would go to Lompoc. Uh, that was my first um, like big shows, were all military shows. Uh, and then uh, I went to Okinawa when I was trying to get my stand up back. I remember I, had, I remember I had I wasn't funny. I remember I, I lost my funny because I started acting like I was rich and stuff like that and started telling rich jokes and stuff like that and lost my funny. And I went to Okinawa and I got in front of the troops and they were they were cool enough to let me uh, just work my stand up out and it was funny. But I had gained a little weight. I ain't gonna tell you. I had gained a little weight so my belly was kind of sticking out and I had on like a vest and I could only close like two buttons and I had like a two pack and a 40 ounce to be honest with you. And at one point, when I was finishing the joke, I rested for a second. And I just remember one of the girls in the audience said, why y'all belly so big? I was like, oh Lord, oh Lord, oh Lord. <laughs> and you thought I couldn't really say nothing. You know, I couldn't really break her eyes up. But after that, you know, got back in shape. So my military, all of my military friends, shout out to my guys, Brian, shout out to JJ Perry, shout out to my guy Rod, who was in Afghanistan for a long time, a Marine. And actually, even when we did Jarhead, experience because I had to uh, really, I really wanted to, to, to hone in on what a African American in that position would have to do. And I met with some great guys who explained to me, it's all green. It's all about us. You know, there was, there was no color in this, you know, this is, this is the way, this is how we protect. This is how we build uh, a brotherhood, sisterhood. And, and I, I wouldn't trade those moments. And and some of my best work was in that it was in that movie uh, Jarhead. There's a couple of speeches in there. So, um, like I said, military is, is so so important. And be looking out for this one movie that I wrote specifically with a with a, paying homage to the military. It's called Career Day. Uh, so be looking out for that. Uh, and last but not least, I got to give a shout out to my guy Brian. You know, he's an ex army ranger and what he would do is when guys would come back, he would supply, he would supply them with houses. He would, he, he had started a contracting business and when they would come back, he would supply them with houses and we would be a support, like a support group for, uh, for those guys. And so I just wanted to make sure that, uh, you know, I acknowledge them not giving the last names and things like that, but, um, uh, it's, uh, uh, it's real. Absolutely. I love that. And then, um, Jamie, what uh, what other projects are you working on right now? Oh, man, I, I got my stand up comedy. I do my stand up. <laughs> so this fall, I'm going out, baby. We finna go and shake it up. Finna go and get out there, get these jokes popping, man. You know, and I tell everybody all the time, man, don't kill the comedian, man. Y'all, you know, hey, man, 
Stop with that, man. Let's go and laugh, man. We ain't got no. We ain't got nothing else. <laughs> crazy as the world is right now, though. And I'm working on. Oh, yeah. I'm literally doing the verses of of impersonation. The verses is gonna be Barack Obama and Donald Trump. It's gonna be hilarious. <laughs> I, can't, I can't wait. I can't wait. And if there's any indication that America is not the most incredible country in the world, and it's a lot of great people on both sides, lots of great people on both sides. <laughs> so you got. I'm telling you right that. Excuse me. Excuse me. Excuse me. Fake news. Fake news. <laughs> That's crazy, right? Oh, yeah. <laughs> Black dude doing it. Shout out to great people on both sides. So I'm working on the stand up. We're gonna go out and just hit all of the places that I that I started out doing, and then we're gonna do something really dope. And it's gonna be more than just stand up. You know how you know how I put my music and everything in there too. So it's gonna be all types of uh, music and 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 jokes and and just fun. Just really like free fun. I'm gonna be telling all the stories. Uh, you gotta hear the story of when Dave Chappelle was on on stage and the dude ran up and tackled Dave Chappelle, and I had to run on stage and, and save the day. It was crazy. And Dave, like, bang, it's crazy man, it's crazy, bam, ran on stage. <laughs> so, if you're ever in trouble, so I'm gonna, I'm gonna be doing all the jokes, man. So make sure you just come out because. People say you stop doing stand-up. I actually never stopped doing stand-up. I just haven't done it officially. So uh, now it'll be official, man. I got my boy Speedy that's going to be coming up. My boy uh, uh, Chris Spencer, Brisha Webb, Jonathan Kite. So just look out for us, man. We're going to make the world laugh. Well, I also heard heard you working on something just in case, you know, folks want to hydrate or, or, or get dehydrated or get a little parched. Oh yeah, oh, yeah. oh yeah. I, I I got a little uh a little brown sugar bourbon, a little brown <laughs> sugar bourbon. Uh, as, and 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 what's great about my my bourbon is that um, it's not velvet rope. It's not VIP. It, it's it's just it's us. You know, it's my Texas roots. And so <clears throat> when I <clears throat> launched into brown sugar. I was, um, the way I got into it was that, you know, I had a song called Blame It on the Alcohol oh, yeah. back in the day, but I didn't have alcohol to blame it on. So when Brown Sugar approached me, <laughs> I tested it by, uh, I tested it by, by I, I would always have these big parties. So I said, well, let me see how it does at the party. I let people taste it, man. And they just enjoyed it so much. So I got behind it myself, Mark Cuban and some others. And then it was, uh, um, it was about how do we market it, you know, because it's brown sugar and, you know, it's bourbon. So, you know what I did? I went to Destin, Florida. Destin, Florida. I don't know how much you know about yeah. Destin, Florida, but yeah, I went down there. I was stationed about 30 minutes away from there. So, you know, so I go down to Destin. Oh, yeah. You know, I'm from the South, so I know what Destin is going to be. But I had some city yeah, yeah, boys, yeah. city black boys. So we when we when we got down there, I said, now you're going to see some things. You ain't, you know, <laughs> they had the Trump yeah, flags definitely. and that thing. We, we, got on, we got on the boat. We were on a boat, right? On our way to Crab Island. They see all the Trump faces. I said, relax. This is our, this, come on, man. This is me. I got you. I get there, and we're literally the only six black guys on Crab Island. Yeah. And all of a sudden, this white guy with a ZZ Top beard, and they're playing the music. I think it was Ted, Ted Nugent. Catch, scratch, fever, whatever, right? <laughs> and he looked up and says, took a shot, Jamie Fox, man, what are you doing here? And I said, hey, I'm here to make a toast with you, baby. <laughs> right? <laughs> so I literally took all the bottles, man, and went out to the middle and there uh, in the BSB. They loved it. But at the same time, there was a lot of Army, Air Force, Navy uh, guys that were there. And that's what that's what launched it. Uh, and then the next thing you know, they uh, changed the music on the boat, started playing Gold Digger. She take my money, and we just went up. <laughs> yes. <laughs> and, and the reason being, and the reason being is because I wanted to, I wanted BSB to be a reflection of who I am, and in, in that everybody's invited to the party. And so uh, we've been really successful. Uh, we also just did a deal with uh, TGI Fridays, Fridays where we're. You know how they make the barbecue wings? Well, now we're doing the BSB barbecue wings. Uh, so we did a great deal with them. 
And uh, and then I just started going basically almost door to door, man, taking the people. When I walk up to my to to my black women, I say, Hey, you wanna try some this? Jamie, I don't know about no bourbon. I said, I guarantee you, <clears throat> it's sweet. It's brown sugar bourbon. And I will let them taste it and the look on their face after they taste it, oh, that's good. I said, Yeah, I got you. I ain't gonna give you nothing that's that's not good. So I've been in every corridor, uh, like I said, going door to door to make sure people uh, enjoy a little brown sugar bourbon. And I say, when somebody brings you some BS, be like, mm-mm, bring me the BSB. <laughs> <laughs> Listen, we just made a commercial just now. That, like, that was just a commercial. So, you know what I'm saying? Uh, appreciate that, appreciate that, Jamie. So, uh, so you've done a, a, a gang of stuff so far in your career. You won a Grammy, you won an a, a Oscar. What, what else is on the, on the bucket list for Jamie Foxx? Just doing great movies, man. Just doing great movies, television. We have a television show that's coming out called Alert. Myself, Tyron Turner, uh, developed the idea. Uh, and then we got it to uh, a, a guy by the name of Eisendraft who was uh, over Blacklist. So we have that at Fox along with Atari Turner. So that's coming out. And then I created the Black Ocean's Eleven. Uh, it, think, think, think about all our greats. Uh, Will Smith, myself, Michael B. Jordan, <clears throat> Kevin Hart. Halle Berry, <clears throat> Dave Chappelle, they're all, they're all these talented thieves, one in Miami, Chicago, LA, et cetera. And they get a cryptid message from a Robert Downey, Robert Downey Jr. type <clears throat> in Paris. <clears throat> they get this message. And when, the, when they get the message, the message says, we want you to come to Paris and pull off the unthinkable. We want you to steal the Mona Lisa from the Louvre. So we created that Black Ocean's Eleven. That's it, Sony right now. We'll start work on that next year. Uh, <clears throat> I redid uh, Misery. Uh, I'm not for sure how familiar you are with that, but Misery was about, about a, uh, uh, a writer who gets found by his uh, biggest fan and things go awry. Well, in ours, it's a, it's a, it's a, it's a TV actor and that uh, quite possibly would be me and my, uh, and my, and my ace, uh, Leonardo DiCaprio. So <clears throat> now at this mo at this point, it's just continuing to give you guys great things in the pipeline that you can sink your teeth into and have fun and be entertained. Well, Jamie, a lot of people this summer have kind of coined the phrase, I'm outside. And when I think <laughs> of being outside, I think about you because I'm on your Instagram and I see you partying, Come promoting your stuff, but also like, you're still actually working. Like day shift was a thing. That was a lot of work, right? So what do yeah. you do to kind of mellow out and balance having fun and turning up and still getting a lot of amazing work done? I think just being in the space that I'm in allows me to have fun. It's fun to go to a movie set. <clears throat> I remember working with an actor. He says, isn't it amazing that we get a chance to do movies? We're basically playing make-believe for a living. So it all sort of goes together. When I'm having fun, I try to have all of, uh, all of the entertainers, you know, like in one place, I tell this story all the time. Back in the day when I did this party, little house party, and it was for Puff and, and Miss Yelly. Now, at first glance, it's just a party, but it's really just to get the artists together, you know, so we could bounce around ideas and things like that. I never get that same party. A guy was uh, standing on the wall. Nobody knew who he was. Guess who it was? It was Jay-Z. And nobody wow. knew him yet. And I walked up. I said, what's that? He's like, nice party. It's crazy. It's <laughs> Start off the Massey Projects. It's, it's, it's crazy, right? And at that same party, uh, out in the garage, there was a tall guy and a shorter guy. And the, uh, the the shorter guy was like, "Yo, B, it's like this all the time, like karaoke and and fun." I said, "Yeah, who are you?" He says, "We're the Neptunes. My name is Pharrell." So mm -hmm. I've always been able to sort of put the art the party and everything together and then long at the same time work. And when, and when it comes to like, you know, like taking a break, it's me and my kids, it's me, my daughters and the family going somewhere where we just take over a place and just continue to have, you know, as much fun as you can, because the one thing is the long hours, you know, that, that can be, you know, taxing. Uh, and, and all that does is sometimes get you away from your family. So anytime we get the family together, man, we get together and just uh, decompress and then, and you know what I'm saying, continue to shine that light. And Jamie, we have so many people watching right now um, from all over the world. And I wanted to just jump really quickly to our Facebook feed and share some of the comments that we're getting, if that's okay with you. All good. 
Okay, perfect. Um, so everyone is excited that you're here. They cannot thank you enough for your time today. It means the world to them. Um, we have a lot of people shouting out from Terrell, Texas. Yes. Uh, <laughs> lots of them. <laughs> yes, Sandy Terrell. Says, <laughs> Sandy says she really enjoys hearing about your relationship with the military. She says, Yo. thank I'm you. Sorry. Go ahead. Oh, no, that's okay. Um, we have everyone just looking forward to your stand up. Um, Michelle says, my mom and I love your show, Shazam. Um, and my boyfriend and I watch you and your daughter on Shazam as well. It's a great show. Um, oh. we have, uh, yes. Oh, there's so much love. I'm Jamie. There's everyone loves you so much. It's hard to keep come up on, with it. Come on, Texas. Come on, Texas. Come on, Texas. <laughs> yes. Uh, we have a Shout lot out to of Terrell. That's people, people say Terrell. I say T-U-R-R-E-L-L. Tur. Turl. Like, like, like Turl. <laughs> Tur. Mark is asking, can we please get a I'll rock your world? Oh, did he freeze up on us? I might have. Uh-oh. Oh, is it? Oh, so I think, he, so he's asking about Wanda, right? Uh, oh, I was like, what is that? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. No, nah, I listen. I don't make a good Wanda at all. So I, would, you know, that we lost. Well, now we're relying definitely... on you to do this. Mark wants it. Let's right, three, two, one, go. No. <laughs> he, well, apparently, apparently, Jamie was rest, rest to go. Uh, that's another uh, right. Wandaism. She rest to yeah. go. <laughs> exactly. But I think we, yeah. I, and people... I, no, go ahead. I was going to say, everyone's asking about Wanda. They're like, are you going to bring Wanda on um, when you do your stand up? Like, everyone's asking about Wanda. <laughs> Listen, Wanda was very prevalent in my house in, in, in high school. And it was, uh, it was a little uncomfortable as, as a child look, looking at Wanda, looking, looking at Wanda. But he was super funny. And I, I love and live in color. Living color was uh, definitely something we talked about every week. Uh, when we went to school. Yeah, no, that's awesome. And you know, it's funny got, when he was, when he was talking about Dustin, um, Florida, we got a lot of people jump in and got really excited about, um, Dustin and ev yes, everyone wants to know about Wanda. Everyone wants to, um, oh, you're back. Hello. Yes. <laughs> hey, so Jamie, while you were gone, while you were gone, I was doing in my impression of Wanda, uh, I'm, I'm kind of lying, but I I, I was hey, about to. For real though. <laughs> First of all, don't be fronting over there like that. Can't nobody recreate or duplicate. <laughs> I was like, oh. <laughs> and Jamie, we were just talking about like all the love that you're getting it um, on our news or on our Facebook feed, um, and that everyone is asking about Wanda and wanting to yes. know if Wanda's going to come on your comedy tour with you. Well, Wanda's always somewhere with me, yeah. <laughs> no matter what. But right. be, look, now, here's the, now here's the thing. This is what I want to know from everybody. <clears throat> so myself and Martin Lawrence had started on this movie idea where Wanda and Shanene were going oh, yeah. to do a movie together. And basically, it was called Wanda and Shanene Rob the MF Bank. And they're <laughs> bank robbers, right? Uh, and then it sort of, we got busy on other things. And so, but then Martin out of nowhere says he wants to do the movie. I want to know, would people go out and watch that? And two, should it be just just the grandiose Wanda, Shanene, and Madea together? I want to know the real <laughs> thought. I want to know because I have a play where if they're all three, we, we, hey, we strap it up for the last time and we put it to rest. But those three uh wonderful characters in a movie if 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 that makes sense y'all sound off and, and and hit me uh on my dms and hit me uh uh at i am jamie fox uh on my ig and let me know if that's hey, what jamie want. jamie i'm gonna speak for the whole military community on this one yes <laughs> yes and, and yes absolutely <laughs> oh that's great that's great well well because <clears throat> literally three days ago Talked to my man Marty Marr, 
And he was like, I'm ready. I said, well, let's look, man, look, if we put in this, what I want to continue to tell everybody, a young Texas boy from Terrell, Texas, I've always put smiles on people's faces, man. That's the reason that I'm here. God put me on this earth to make people laugh and, and make people feel something good. So with everything that we've gone through, COVID, losing my sister to COVID and all of these tough things, when she says being outside, let's get outside and continue to be outside. And we will continue to just give you so many good things and so much fun. Shout out to Terrell. <laughs> <laughs> well, I can tell you, uh, like your your character, Martin's character. Uh, like I said, I can watch Martin and I can watch In Living Color, like it, like this brand new, and still laugh like I've never seen it before. And so <laughs> those characters that y'all have are, are freaking timeless, and uh, we would love to see them on on the main stage. Robbing the bank, I couldn't even imagine Medea, Shanae, and Wanda. Robert, anyway. come on, man. So is it like, a, come on, is man. it gonna be like a set it off? It's gonna be like a set it off type situation, or <laughs> to be honest, to be honest with, you, to be honest with you, what it is is that it's two people robbing banks. Shanae robs the bank, and she's robbing a bank in San Francisco, and that's how it opens. But we also see in Oakland, Wanda's robbing a bank in Oakland, but they're robbing banks for two different reasons. Wanda's just trying to get some money. <laughs> but 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 we find out Shanae is actually not taking money. She's taking information. And she's the modern day Robin Hood. All of the big corporate people that are taking money from everybody, she's putting it back quietly into their bank accounts by taking the, these hard drives. So when they get to when they get to Sacramento cuz they they they're robbing banks from Northern California to Southern California. They they don't know each other, but they actually set up to rob a bank and they end up going in at the same time. And you hear them both go, it's a stick up. Don't make it a murder. Who is you? Who is you? And then they end up needing to be with each other but in order to get out of the situation. And then they end up robbing banks from Northern California to Southern California. People catch on to what they're doing, the Robin Hood uh, thing of it. Uh, uh, and so now they're, they, they're becoming heroes because they're doing something for the people. And then, uh, uh, there's a little part where, you know, Madea comes in cause there's, there's, they need, there's a get, they need to get out of this situation. And then towards the end of the movie, they come in and by the time they get down to San Diego, it's fevered pitch. That's, that's what it is. Man, <laughs> sign, sign me up. Sign come me on. up. <laughs> so, uh, where, where, where can we find out more about your work uh, and your causes. Uh, you got you got your social media handles. Yeah, you can just go to I am Jamie Fox uh, on Instagram, um, and, and that's the best way. You know, I'm not I'm, I'm not I'm not as savvy on uh, social media. I'm trying I'm trying to get there. You know what I'm saying? Uh, but but I, I like to I, I like to post, especially when I got something good for you. You know what I'm saying? I, I try to, and, and something funny for you. Something good, something funny. So you go check that out and then check, go there to find out the dates of my comedy because I'm coming to Texas. I'm going to come to okay. Texas like in October and I'm going to just look, I'm going to just come see if these jokes work. Everybody just be patient with me because you know what I'm saying? Like doing it formally, I'm, I, I got to deal with Netflix and so I just want to make try these jokes out, man, and see where we go, see how much trouble I can get into, see see how close I can get to get canceled. <laughs> 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 but I tell people all the time, man, it's just, it's just jokes. So, so come, you know, come, come check that out. And then you can see, uh, uh, you know, the m movies and then the, we just dropped some music as well at the end of uh day shift. Uh, my guy, Dave Franco says mowing down vamps with my best friend, bud. We turned that into a music, uh, to a song. So myself, Snoop, Jay Young, Sam Pounds, Taylor, uh, Dave Franco, Megan Good, we're all in the video, so that'll be dropping. The 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 uh, remix of it will be dropping uh, next week. Awesome, awesome. And so for our Chief Chat viewers, you can find this episode as well as past Chief Chat episodes on YouTube and Spotify. You can tune in at 11 a.m. Central, September 1st, when I guess will be actor Banga Akin Gobe. I, I probably hey, messed that up. I'll get it yeah, right I, before I, it actually I, I, gets here. I was, I listen, I was going to say, I don't know how you're going to get through that. Cause I just said, I said exactly what you said. 
<laughs> and, and, and so he's going to be on the show to discuss uh, his role in the action pack F6 FX series, The Old Man. And 11 a.m. Central, September 13th, I guess will be actor and former Marine Ernie Hudson, who will talk about his movie and TV career, including his role on NBC's upcoming reboot of Quantum Leap. So we got some, wow. we got some heavy hit. Yes, we got um, some heavy hey, hitters from OG man, in the game. Ernie. Man, Ernie, man. Yeah. Like, I mean, and real quick, um, Ghostbusters. Just, and real quick, someone just kind of jumped in a little. Bird just told me that you will be in Irving, Texas, which Irving is my city. You will be in Irving, Texas in November. So we, we can hang out. I can show you some good brunch spots. We'll pick up the <laughs> man, We'll have a man, great look, time. <laughs> listen, tell me, hey, look here, look here. I'm going to talk just like I, when I left her. Man, look here, dog. Whatever you want to do, dog. We ready. <laughs> yeah. All ready. I'll hold you to it. No. I will Let's come and go. find you and say, you said. Come on. You said. And, and it's I an interesting want. thing, too. It's an interesting thing, too, when you are from Texas, and especially from our area. There's, a, there's just so much camaraderie, man, and and so much cowboy love. I, I love that. I love that number two. Was it? Was it? Was it? What name? Turpin. The number two. Oh yeah. <laughs> Man. So I got my fingers crossed out here. You know, I went down here to Oxnard to see Jerry Jones yeah. and them. You know, out here for the Cowboys. You know, you talking to Jerry. Jerry, how we looking? Well, uh, we feel that uh, it's gonna be our time this year. <laughs> and uh, we talked to. Uh, you know, I talked to Emmett and I talked to Michael and Troy, and we're just we're just trying to get that same DNA and that same legendary chemistry to trickle down here to these guys. And uh, I think that uh, uh, that uh, that Dak and all these guys are they're finally coming around. We're turning a corner, Jamie. So we're gonna be fine. <laughs> oh yeah, Is America's that team all day long. Man, that was. <laughs> what we are i tell people all the time i say listen no matter what you say we're still america's team america <laughs> <laughs> hey, could you imagine all of them I... in one room barack in one room trump and jerry and Ramon? that's that's what i'm gonna do i'm gonna do all of them and, and run a <laughs> pause in one room. so now i was telling uh the folks i was telling my co-host before you came on i was like you know what Jamie's such a great party planner. He should he should do a military ball. He should host a military ball whenever you want me. I'm there. I, I'm talking about I'm wherever there. You, I've you, already I've done that before, so I, I'm there. And we 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 do that autom we do that all the time. So you guys let me know once we get off. Give me the information, man. We'll listen. I, I I'm gonna continue to say this, man. For all of my military family and friends, we want to keep pouring blessings upon y'all because sometimes. <clears throat> what you guys do sort of gets lost in a lot of the headlines, but man, I, I from guys that I know uh, and how sincere you are and what it is and the sacrifices that you guys make, it is literally a no brainer for me to be there and host wherever you guys want. And we'll listen, we'll make it, we'll make it a night to remember and then try to figure out how we can continue to do it. And that's real. That's not, that's not just cause I'm on this, uh, on this camera. Awesome, awesome man so yeah we'll, we'll work we'll, we'll figure something out we'll brainstorm and, and hopefully come up with something uh but we appreciate you jamie man you you are such an inspiration to so many folks uh like i said you've been literally growing up in people's household for the past 30 years right and so it's it's a blessing to have you uh spread your gift of, of humor and and then so i was thinking about comedians that try to try to do the singing thing or and, and like I said, I love Eddie Murphy, but party all the time. I just wasn't, I wasn't feeling party all the time, right? But what, but, but, but what, but you, you came in with, with comedy and then you got on the piano and then you start singing and, and you put all these talents together in one person, man, you, you know what I'm saying? And, and the fact that you're taking that and you're giving that to the world, uh, we just appreciate it. And, and even the people from the military, they thank us for our service, but uh, we can't do any of this stuff without, everybody everybody's in the fight so whether civilian whether you're entertainer whatever the case may be we we just appreciate you and thank you for uh you know gifting us with your with your talents thank you listen and it's all right back to you and shout out to tarot texas man shout out to my best <laughs> friend gilbert shout out to my best friend gilbert willie uh and we plan on putting up some really cool things on our side of town as far as sport uh places and things like that you know 
we both grew up on the we go to the black park you know what i'm saying and play basketball and, and things like that and that's where a lot of our history is from so we're coming down through some uh great things down there and uh like i said let's it's right back at you anytime you guys need me let let's 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 not let this moment go by and say man we had oh man we should have let's go ahead and do it let's put it on the books absolutely absolutely so uh before before we leave uh if you could stay on to after the live so uh we all can say our formal goodbyes but uh i just want to say again thank you so much for spending the last hour with us we we didn't know we we're gonna have an hour with you so uh man we feel blessed and fortunate and thank you so much uh, uh, now we're gonna have a concert it, we about to transition from a thank you thank you oh thank thank you for everything that you do thank you put that thing on itunes oh man sexual chocolate sexual, sexual chocolate, sexual chocolate. <laughs> sexual caramel <laughs> <laughs> all right we, we all right, gonna, we gonna, thank thank you for all the viewers uh we gonna we gonna transition to the formal goodbyes but chief chat out thank you so much jamie thank you brother.